Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial series. Today we're just going to finish up the inventory system. So now I can grab an item. It's going to be grayish right here as you can see in an inventory. And I can just drag and drop it in the hotbar. I can grab a couple of more items and if I release them they're just going to be put back in place. I can also grab an item from the hotbar, release it and it's going to be put back in place. And if I drag it over to the inventory it's just going to be put back in the inventory. Awesome. So this is what you're going to be doing today. And since we got a lot to do today let's stop talking and start coding. Let's start by creating our prefab for the drag preview. So let's just go into the prefabs folder, uh, go to the inventory slot prefab and just duplicate one of those. It does not matter which one you choose. Once that is duplicated, just rename it to item preview and hit enter. And now we can delete a couple of properties. The only thing I actually want to keep is basically the image. So let's remove all of this. Uh, the scripts, we don't need those at all. And if I double click on it, we also want to remove the remove button like this. So that we basically just have a image script and we probably want to keep it as a simple image like this. Awesome. And maybe change, put down the alpha just a little bit, something to 25. And then the width and the height, let's put in something like 75 and 75. I think that's the size of our hotbar. If you have a different size of the hotbar, just change it to a different size, doesn't really matter. Let's now go to the scripts folder and open up the item drag script in Visual Studio. And this is going to be quite different from the last tutorial. So let's first off delete a couple of properties we don't really need. We are not going to use the item sibling anymore and the base parent, we don't need those. Delete this. And the end drag function, let's delete that also. And then the set parent, we don't want to set any parents in the begin drag. And this is how this should look like. Now we need references to our new game object. So let's make a public game object. And this is going to be the preview prefab. And then we also want a private game object. And let's call this the current preview. And when we are beginning to drag an item, we just want to change the alpha. So change alpha. Let's make a comment down here. And then we want to instantiate a new object. So the current preview object is going to be equal to instantiating a new object like this. And we want to instantiate the prefab, so preview prefab. And then the parent is very important. It has to be the game manager dot instance and then dot main canvas. So that we have it under a canvas and do not spawn a new canvas or get some kind of weird behavior. And we want to get the current preview dot get component and we want to get the image component. And to be able to use this, we want to be using unity engine dot UI like this. Now we can use the image and like that and dot sprite. We want to just set the sprite to the item slot dot item and then dot icon so that it has the same icon as the item that this sits on and then we also have to set up the new position so the current preview dot transform is going to be equal to the transform dot position of this game object so this is just going to instantiate a new preview then set up the icon for the image component and then just transform it to the new position and when we drag an object we don't want to drag this game object we want to drag the current preview dot transform dot position so just copy the current preview down here and the transform that position like this. Awesome. So if I go back to Unity and go to the prefabs folder and click on the inventory slot prefab, I should have a field down here that I need to assign to so the preview prefab. So just drag and drop the item preview down here. Once I start the game and open up the inventory, I have a couple of items here. And now if I grab an item, I see the preview. And then if I drop it in the hotbar, I see it like this. Uh, but I still see the preview, which I don't want to see. But it kind of works if I drop it down here, nothing happens, the item stays where it is. And if I, let's say, drag the stone, the stone removes and we see it in the hotbar. Let's now work on the removing. Once we end the dragging, we want to destroy the item. So just go in here and destroy the current preview like this. And it should destroy the item. So that should be all right. But now we want to actually also change the alpha channel of the selected item so that we know which item we have selected. So let's just go up here and add a new property, a private image property and call this image. And let's also add a new private color property and let's call this the base color. And in the start function, we just want to assign the image. So the image is going to be equal to the get component and image. And then the base color is going to be equal to the image dot color like that, just simple. And when we select an item, we want to change the alpha so that we know which item we have selected. Let's make a new var and call this temporary color. And this is going to be equal to the base color. And then the temporary color dot a for the alpha is going to be equal to something like 0.6, which is 60%. And then the image dot color is just going to be equal to the temporary color. So this is going to set our alpha down. And then we want to reset it. So right here, when we, where we end the dragging, we just want to go in here and go image dot color is going to be equal to the base color that we started on. Awesome. So let's go into Unity and check it out how it looks. So let's open up the inventory, spawn a couple of items. And if I select this wood, I'm going to see it grayish like this. And if I let it go, it's going to be put back into color. 
and as if I drag it down here it's going to just switch around and this looks quite good in my opinion I'm happy with that awesome let's now start working on the hotbar drop system to be able to decide if we dropped an item in the inventory we need a reference to the inventory so let's make a private rect transform and let's call this the inventory rect and the inventory rate is just going to be equal to the game manager dot instance and then we need to create something so let's open up the game manager by ctrl q and then typing in game manager in visual studio and now i can see the game manager i can hit enter and it opens up and then here we have the public hotbar transform we want to create a new public transform and let's call this the inventory transform so now we have a reference to the inventory transform let's go back to the item drag script we are not going to need the game manager anymore and now we can just access the instant dot inventory transform and we can cast it to a rect transform Awesome, let's now go down here and we want to add an or statement and then let's copy the whole thing right here and we want to check if the mouse position is somewhere near the inventory rect. Then we want to also switch the inventory spaces, which is quite all right, this should work. So let's go back to Unity and set everything up that we just changed around. So go to the game manager and we have to drag in the inventory transforms, open up the canvas and the inventory parent is the inventory transform right here. Awesome, and we also want to go to the hotbar slot prefab right here in the prefabs folder. Scroll down here and let's add the invent item drag script right here. And we have to set up the preview prefab. This is just this item, the preview prefab. And now if I start the game, open up the inventory, spawn a couple of items. I can still drag around the items from the inventory. And if I put a couple of them in the hotbar, I should be able to select them and drag them back to the inventory. But I still have a little bug where if I grab a stake from the inventory and, and put it down in the inventory, it's going to switch to the hotbar because we don't know which slot we are dragging around. So let's just make a new private variable and figure this out. Let's make a private bool and let's call this the is hotbar slot. And the hotbar slot is going to be equal to a boolean function. And let's just go down here on the and drag function, copy this whole rect transform utility. Paste it up here at a semicolon and what do we want to check? So we want to check if this game object, so what the slot in the, let's say the hotbar for example, is inside the hotbar rectangle, then the is hotbar slot is true. And if this is false, then this is going to be false, which is quite all right, this should work. Now we know if we're working with a hotbar slot or an inventory slot, but we also have to check. So if you want to drop an item in the hotbar rectangle, then we have to work with an inventory slot so the hotbar slot that we have is hotbar slot has to be false let's put an exclamation point in it and we can also wrap this in parentheses and then we want to do it the other way around down here with the if, if the other statement so let's just put an end and then is hotbar slot and be sure to have the same parentheses as, as i do so if we have a hotbar slot and we are dragging it into the inventory rectangle then we are quite all right so we are dragging from the hotbar slot right here to the inventory and if you want to drag it from the inventory that means that this is false then we have to drag it into a hotbar rect so let's now save it and start the game spawn a couple of items and let's now just grab a stake and try to drop it in the, in the inventory and nothing happens and if i drag it down here everything's all right and i cannot drag it from the hotbar to the hotbar and then i can drag it back here awesome now we have a functioning script like this but we still have a little error that we have to fix so now if I go to the crafting tab, this is an error that occurred in the last couple of tutorials. I have enough stone, I have enough wood to craft a bow. But down here I get a debug.log statement that, that we don't have enough ingredients to craft it. And we can figure that out by opening up the crafting recipe. And this can craft is going to be false. That's why we cannot craft an item right here. So you don't have enough recipes. We're checking if we have all the items. So let's hover over it, hit F12 so we can see the contains item function. And in here, this is the failing part of our system because we're checking for the identity of an object. So object X and object Y, if they're the same, which is never going to be true. But we can bypass this quite easily by just go i.name and then it's going to be passed into the item.name but we don't really need the whole item anymore. We can just pass in a string and the item name. Then we can just check for every single item in the inventory list if it's equal to the item.name. And if we contain enough items then we can pass this along. But we want to also check for the hotbar so let's just copy and paste this for each loop. And then we want to check for each item in the hotbar item list. If the name of the item is going to be equal to the name, then we want to add to the counter. Awesome. Let's go back to the crafting recipe. And right here, we want to put in another name so that we check for the name of the item and not for the item identity. That is quite all right. 
but we also have to now check the remove function. So remove items, this is going to be called if I click on the reference by the crafting recipe dot remove items. And again, we do not want to remove the item. So if I F12 on this one, I'm going to remove the item by the identity, which is quite all right because this gets called by the X icon. And yes, if we hit the X icon on an item, then we want to remove the item with the identity. But if we are crafting something, we just want to grab the first items. So let's make a new function and let's call this remove item type. This is going to take in a string and let's call this the item name. And in here, we just want to basically loop for each item. So let's go up here and copy this for each loop. This is going to be quite all right. So for each item I in the inventory system list. So if the item is going to be equal to the item name that we pass in here, then we want to go to the inventory item list and remove the item. And then we want to return because this function is supposed to just remove one item. So return out of this function this is quite all right so this way we just delete the first item with the same name in the list and then we also want to check if it's not in the inventory item list then we want to delete it from the hotbar this is just a new functionality you don't have to do this and so the hotbar item list dot remove and then we want to remove everything from the hotbar this is going to be quite all right and in here we do not want to call the remove item function we want to call the remove item type function where we pass in the item name and we don't need to pass in the whole item so let's just make a string out of it and call this the item name paste it down here and let's hop over to the reference because this is going to be wrong so now in the crafting recipe we want to pass in the remove items dot item name so the name right here so we have to change this name here and then here the name for the ingredients as well then in the inventory we just want to remove every single item with the same name not with the identity of the object because we're creating multiple instances of a given object. For example, the two woods in the inventory that we had previously were not the same exact woods in memory. They were just in different places, but they looked the same because they just had the same icon. But we want to remove the items with the same name when we are crafting something. And we also want to add the functionality that the item can be in the hotbar, not in the inventory. So let's hop over to Unity and test this out. So let's open up our inventory, hit a couple of times X. And right here I have one, two, three, four stone and I do need some wood. So let's hit a couple of more times X right here. I have one, two, three, four, five stone and one wood. So let's grab the wood and put it in the hot bar. And now I know that I need one wood. So if I hit the bow recipe, the wood is going to be removed from the hot bar because we did not have any wood in the inventory right here. And I can also grab this new crafted item, put it in the hot bar and then put it backwards. And it's going to just work as the other items. I hope you enjoyed this mini series that expands on our inventory and crafting system. I do have a new Discord channel, so check that link out. It's in the description down below. You can join it. And if you have any questions or want to actually shape the future of this channel, be sure to join it. If you want me to do anything else, if it's the inventory system, just leave a comment down below. And please like the video to support me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.